Okay, folks, so I am headed to a show. Um, actually, I've already done the show. <laughs> this is just an intro to the show. Uh, if you haven't seen my uh, videos before, I am a 34-year veteran in the antiques and collectibles business in Canada here in Manitoba on the Canadian prairies. Uh, been picking for a long time, uh, and here I just basically share with you some of the behind the scenes and the reality of the antiques business. Uh, I don't sugarcoat it. I just give you the facts and the good and the bad. Uh, and in this particular case, it might be more bad. Um, yeah. So anyway, did the show and here we go. So I'm at the Dunray Flea Market, Antiques Flea Market in line. They don't open until, let's see, uh, noon for registration. So just uh, hanging out. And uh, I picked up a piece on the way here. So I'll show it to you. It's a uh, diorama of a ship, uh, the Marie. I'm not sure the history on it or anything that's not signed or anything. So I don't know the uh, maker, but pretty cool piece gonna have to be careful I see I think the waves are wax so I'm gonna have to watch the uh, heat on this one so yeah but neat piece I'm gonna uh, I've got a buyer in mind so I'm gonna send him some photos and uh, see if he's interested before I put it on my table for sale so just setting up and uh, I ended up with a long booth rather than a one across the front so I got kind of a hallway and uh, I got extra large tables which doesn't bode well when you've got fitted tablecloths <laughs> so yeah kind of got them all bunched up here but don't really have much choice because the tablecloths don't fit but uh, I'll cover them up with crates and such anyway and yeah so and I had one less table or was able to fit in one less table so but I think the wide tables will make up for it for space anyway I guess we'll keep unpacking here so almost all set up still got a bit to do not one of my better setups but is what it is it is basically built as an antiques flea market so not quite an antique show, so I guess it doesn't have to be perfect. But, uh, lots of got everything on. Lots of people set up already. So I'll show you when it's all done. So not much action inside yet. Second arena. People are partially set up. Not terribly busy, but it's only set up. So I'm basically done setting up. It's now Sunday morning. I'm gonna be doing some buy-in hopefully. But here's the booth. So it's all set up. Got an aisle here, so got a double double display sort of facing both ways. And we'll go back.
gonna be a short day of five hours of sale time. Hopefully there'll be some buying that'll make up some uh, or make me some profits as well. Missed a sign, really nice sign, the $800 though, but uh, probably still $400 to $600 worth of uh, profit to be made, but we got here too late. But it's supposedly open at 8, but it must have opened earlier, so, because it's 8 now. This is the arena where I'm set up. I don't know if there's more vendors here last than last year or not. In the middle of the action, in the field. Now, as a customer, would I recommend the show? Yes, definitely. Well worth attending. If you're a buyer, a collector, dealer, very much worth attending. Lots of stuff. There's over 100 vendors. Uh, definitely worth uh, going to buy. Uh, there's still lots of stuff. I didn't find a whole lot that I figured I could make a buck on. Um, but I wasn't having much luck in general, and I was a little bit jaded. Um, the Because there wasn't that many outdoor dealers, a lot of the outdoor dealers, not all of them, but some of them uh, tend to be more casual dealers. One time, you know, we'll do that show, and that's the only show they do. So there's always some neat stuff that pops up. Some There was some neat stuff did already pop up, but other dealers managed to scoop it before I ever saw it, so... Uh, the show opened earlier on to dealers on uh, Sunday. Uh, it was supposed to be 8 o'clock. They were well open by 7 o'clock or, or earlier. So there was lots of activity already going on. So I'm sure I missed stuff then when stuff was just being unloaded from trailers and trucks and such. So anyway, but so as a customer, well worth attending. So do attend the show. I uh, recommend it highly. If you're just over the border in Minnesota or North Dakota or even South Dakota, uh, well worth attending. Uh, you'll do well. I'm sure you'll, you could probably uh, get a good truckload of stuff if you're uh, a prolific dealer down there. Anyway, hey folks, so how did I do? This is going to be the big question. Uh, so on Saturday, uh, I was there a day earlier to set up. And that also means hotel. So there was about $125 for a hotel room uh, that I had to pay out. But uh, I spent about $30 on inventory. And let's see, I brought in $97 in pre-sales. So not a lot of money. Um, you usually expect a little more than that. But uh, I know others didn't sell that much either. So I guess that's par for the course. Um, Sunday, however, I was really hoping to do much better. Excuse the chair. I got to get a new office chair here. Um, anyway, I spent $86, uh, bought a few things, uh, but, um, didn't find much, unfortunately. Uh, the few things that did pop up, other dealers managed to grab, um, as well i did see a few neat things but not as much as uh, normally do there wasn't that many outside vendors compared to the previous years uh the arena was still basically full with the exception of a couple spaces there was a couple empty booth spaces uh the curling arena uh was about half full i guess so and it wasn't all antiques it was a, a mix of antiques and uh Bake, I think there was baking or something like that, food and crafts and that sort of thing. So, um, yeah, so how, how did I sell, I guess, is the question on Sunday. Uh, so the grand total for Sunday, 
was $648. Now, to some that may seem like a lot. To others, they, you may realize it's not a lot. Um, considering that I include GST in my items, there's 5% comes out of that right away. So that will go to the government. And let's see, there's also cost of goods. So if you take even a third of that, that leaves, what, um, roughly $400. And then there's fuel, which would be probably 75 or so. Uh, hotel, which was another hundred and a quarter. Um, time and effort. Uh, spent a week ahead packing, and I'm going to spend another week just slowly unpacking. Um, I could do it all in a day, I suppose. Uh, packing and unpacking, but uh, I like to put it out over time. But anyway, so was it worth it? No, <laughs> it was not worth it. Um, I enjoy that show. The show should be much better than it is. It's uh, It was very disappointing. Um, considering I sp took two booth spaces, but I ended up with a long space rather than a wide space um so basically i had a kind of a narrow hallway sort of set up as you saw um i was hoping for something longer so i could have at least eight foot entrances two eight foot entrances in the space so it'd be much easier much more inviting um i think that did affect sales uh would i do that again would i take two booths no um next year I don't know if I'll do it or not. I've got to think hard over the next year whether it's going to be worthwhile doing it or not. Um, I think there needs to be some advertising done, some extra advertising. Um, the crowd was awfully gray. Uh, there wasn't that many 30-somethings or 20-somethings or even 40-somethings. Everybody was basically 50, 60 plus. Um, so yeah that that was kind of disturbing um and a lot of them were there for basically entertainment purposes rather than collecting and buying there's not a lot of bags being carried around uh there was some prolific buyers that were buy there to buy and were serious to buy but normally that show years ago was far better and uh there would be actually quite a few buyers, and there would be U.S. buyers. Uh, in this case, they, they're not advertising uh, over the border anymore, or uh, haven't since it was taken over by the, uh, the Lions, local Lions Club there. So I'm not sure what can be done. I think maybe um, they, they did have 1,800 people through, but that didn't really translate to sales for a lot of us. Um, some people did did okay i have to admit i've heard some did fine uh you know two thousand dollars twenty five hundred dollars three thousand dollars four thousand dollars but it's not um not consistent across the board with with dealers there was some dealers that had just just as poor days as i did or worse so it's a little yeah kind of odd um don't know uh Personally, if I was advertising, I would be targeting uh, advertisers across the line. I'd be targeting collectors' publications. I would be targeting, um, uh, let's see, some of the free radio advertising that's available for them. Because it's a Lions Club, they are a non-profit and they have access to this advertising. So I'm not sure why they're not using all of that advertising possibilities and there's not that much in social media being done there's just one Facebook group uh, or Facebook page that they have and they're not really targeting advertising in uh, Facebook targeted advertising or Google or anything like that so there's they need somebody doing social media I think is what what would really help there um, I noticed other shows they've specially gotten people that are social media savvy and those that uh, are social media recognized I guess uh, influencers you could say 
in the antiques industry to uh, come to the show and promote it and uh, get people thinking about coming to that show. Um, a lot of those are two-day shows, however, but uh, and this one I think could be made into a two-day show if they were able to do it. But it's being run by volunteers, um, whereas before the show was privately owned, so maybe that's making a big difference. Um, whereas volunteers, they're not benefiting directly from the sales and such. They did have 1,825 people through, which is up 100, I think, from last year or thereabouts. So it's not like the crowd wasn't there, but they just weren't a buying crowd. And that makes a big difference. You could have half the crowd, but all the crowd being collectors and dealers makes a huge difference the money then flows whereas if it's just local people or people looking to kill time you're not making those kinds of sales you're not making hundred dollar sales you're making five and ten and twenty dollar sales that's what you're making if that so i don't know don't know didn't do well uh not overly happy about it um makes me really think on a business perspective should i do it again probably not um, because I like the show and it's a local show and I want to support it, I still would like to do it, but my business mind is going, no, it's, it's not worth it. Um, the expenses are just, the expenses are there and basically wipe out, uh, any profit I made. Um, basically didn't make profit. So, yeah. Anyway, thanks for listening and <laughs> listening to my griping. But uh, yeah, anyway, thanks for watching, folks. Please be sure to like and subscribe and check out our other videos on antiquing, picking, thrifting, scrapping, etc. Take care, folks.